I want to pick up on the discussion we just had, and you talk about, Joseph, you said, how far will we go? And we've discussed that many times on this show. And other groups, and let's just be clear, they have been using the playbook that black folks have executed for the last 30 years, and that is that inside-outside game. So, Armstrong, how far should African Americans go? Should, w- would you say to black folks, wait a minute, if this was a white president, would you press that person as hard uh, uh, as you should President Obama? Well, you know, I like what Angela said about the cabinets. And not just the symbolism of it. They have a lot of power in those agencies where they dole out a lot the of good. Staffs. Yes. You saw, yes. you saw yes. this week yes. Secretary of State Hillary yes. Clinton appearing before Congress. Right. Who was sitting just over her right shoulder? Everybody kept tweeting me, who's that black woman? Chief of Staff. Her chief of Staff. Right. So Angela makes a good point. But yet, the president in his appointments since being reelected has just totally ignored that issue. And I didn't like the way he they tossed um, Susan Rice under the bus. I thought there should have been more of an outcry about her. And I hope this is not an indication of what's to come. But still, I think if you really want to give empower black people, I don't think people realize just how funds at historical black colleges and universities True. are being cut and how it's being pared back. And the majority of blacks graduate gotcha. from those historical colleges and universities. The president's feet should be held to the fire that you increase funding to these institutions. We saw him also step out in a major way and say that he wasn't kind of just going to be as calm and as nice and as easygoing as he was the first term. I think this term he can also use his executive order powers, which he's done with the gun control issue. He issued 23 executive actions. He can do the same thing, just like with the White House um, initiative on excellence in education for African Americans to empower and equip us. Everything that African Americans need don't necessarily cost money, um, and we can definitely use the executive order process. Uh, I'll, I'll, I, Chris, go ahead. I think it's um, a, a mistake to not bring to the table this question of what the symbolism of having this president means for African Americans, and that is the big elephant that's always in the room. And in some ways, when you have this president who's being taken the oath for the second time on King Day, it's 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 been difficult for African Americans to find ways to push back. Um, no, but here's the deal. First of all, I agree. And here's, here's my position. Um, I think we're all clear on the symbolism. But my view is symbolism is great. But you also must take advantage of opportunity. And when you get 96% of the black vote in 2008, 93% in 2003, it's called return on investment. And what jumps out at me is if you only focus on symbolism, what that says is I don't have to ask for anything. So then at 2016, you're going to look back and say, what happened? What happened? Oh, we had great symbols. Well, but were there results? That's a political challenge. challenge. It's, not the president's, it's not the president's responsibility for us to accept symbolism as enough, right? I wrote a piece on the seven things he must accomplish this term um, that all address our issues. Right. So some of it is making sure that, again, we're meeting, we're discussing what's on our agenda. Of course, we need to figure out how to make it an American agenda, but we need to make sure that we're on the same page. I won't touch on this subject here. That is, you're seeing Republicans uh, of various states looking at changing the voting rules, and that is Electoral College. They're looking at uh, assigning, uh, Virginia's looking at this, assigning uh, Electoral College based upon who wins congressional districts. Democrats are saying vote rigging. That's one of the headlines on Huffington Post. They have this map, and we're going to show the map right now, that this is the map that had congressional district uh, apportion, apportionment being in, been in place. Mitt Romney would have gotten 273 Electoral College votes. Uh, President Obama would have gotten 262, and on Monday we would have seen the inauguration of Mitt Romney. Now, here's, I think, a problem that Democrats have with this. Democrats are saying, vote rigging, this is wrong. But the Democratic primary uses the yeah. exact same model. Yes. They, right. And in fact, a lot of folks may not realize that that model was put in place after the 1988 primary because Ron Brown, Harold Ickes, right. the late Dr. Ron Walters, felt that the Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. did not get enough credit in terms of the delegates that he won, so they changed the rules to proportional delegation. So if this uh, becomes a major piece across the country, this poses a significant problem for Democrats when you see, put the map back up, all of those red uh, congressional districts right there. 
There's no question about it. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, let's just acknowledge that Republicans are having some real soul-searching conversations about what they can do to change the game four years from now. And so I think we're going to continue to see this kind of thing take place where but, you're looking but, but at what here's, kind of Here's the problem, Chris. In the past, some Democrats have sponsored legislation on the state level to do the exact same thing when they were losing the White House. Here's the challenge, and I think that we have to be really, really careful with this. First and foremost, the Republicans, whether on the, the congressional level or larger, largely with the RNC, have been trying to reflect upon what they can do to win back the attention of the American people. And the only way they can do that is to change this system to make it look like they're winning instead of focusing on the real issue. And the real issue is that they're no longer speaking for the American people. They're speaking Four for two, a very, two, exactly. very small Portion, and they have to address the issues rather than changing the system. Well, you know what? That, 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 that point is debatable. I think Roland Martin, well, he took the words out of my mouth. What is good for the gander is good for the goose. And the Republicans are not introducing anything new. They're just taking from the playbook of Democrats in the past, but and see, they're just saying, here it no, is. No, 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 but see, that, but, it but, is. But see the difference it's is, the difference different. is the playbook was a primary playbook, not a general election playbook. And you're talking about a party that is basically lost the last couple of elections, is polling really, really badly. I mean, it's one thing to change the rules when you're on solid ground, on a level ground. It's another thing to change the rules to try to come out ahead. I have to, I, but, but, but again, though, uh, again, again, though, let me provide some pushback here based upon facts, and this, and this is the fundamental problem here, and that is this here. Most of these changes are being made as a result of the midterm elections in 2010. Democrats under Howard Dean as chair, they had a 50 state strategy. He said we cannot be a party focused just on national elections. We must focus on building our state infrastructure. You had Rahm Emanuel, James Carville, Paul Bagali, who said you nuts, put the money in national elections. They got rid of Howard Dean when President Barack Obama won. They went back to sort of this national uh, campaign. So what happened? Republicans flipped 16 legislatures in 2010. Right. Yes. Got yeah. more governors. Yeah. And so when we say the nation, how the nation is voting, yes, the nation has voted for President Barack Obama. But on the state they, level, they, the they are voting yeah. for Republicans. Thank you. Democrat, so by Democrats ignoring local elections, this is the result. So if you only focus on the presidency of congressional races and not state races and gubernatorial races, these things are going to happen. Is, that's and that's how we got voter things. suppression laws. That's one of the things, Martin. I mean, yeah, you were you were um, you brought up the laws, um, the voter suppression laws are uh, laws that uh, have been fought in the, by the DOJ all year came from state legislators. So you're seeing a lot of changes there that folks have to watch out for. And civil rights groups have been raising the alarms. Um, you know, for the last several years, and that's going to continue to take place. But you also have the redistricting challenge, and this is why this is critical. This is very strategic, so I applaud your party on strategy. But what I'll say is this. When you look at the fact that these state houses that were flipped in 2010 then could draw the redistricting maps, these are gerrymandered Republican districts. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if now the congressional districts are what is utilized to demonstrate who won the popular vote, even though it's no it's longer a popular true. vote, it's rigged. It's that is the true. problem. It's not about this Democratic strategy, again, that was used in Democratic primaries. This is about a larger problem of seats that we no longer hold but, just based but, on but, gerrymandering. Purpose, but, but Joe, before I go to you, for the purpose of the audience, though, the individuals who win state House races and state Senate races, they are the ones who redraw districts. Right. Absolutely. And That's so right. what happened was Democrats were not paying attention right. to those races. They ignored them. And then all of a sudden, when those houses flipped, it used to be you had Republicans maybe controlling one house, right. Democrats controlling the other, or at least the, the, the gubernatorial mansion. By them falling asleep at the wheel, they allow Republicans to win the House, the Senate, and the governor's mansion. And so now they say, wait a minute, we now are in control to flip to flip and the maps. And Joseph. But, you're, but you're flipping the maps, and, and that premise is entirely correct. And it, it, yeah, shame on Democrats for staying home in 2010. But the problem is, what do you do now? Where do you go from here? And what happens when you have Republican state legislatures enacting all these laws that are barely constitutional, questionably constitutional in a lot of cases, and you have states in Michigan, uh, states like Michigan, Ohio, Wisconsin, enacting these draconian laws that are going up to a Republican-controlled or a Republican-dominated Supreme Court and getting enacted and Fight. getting solidified. Armstrong, final comment, then I'm going to close it out. Listen, the die is cast. 
Virginia is going to vote for it. The governor is going to sign it, and it will sweep the country. What you got to do and it will is sweep come the country up, yeah. through a through Alec. Call, it, call it whatever you want call it whatever you want to call it. The die is cast. I want to close it out this way. You have heard me say on this show for the last three years why you cannot focus on national elections. This is precisely why. When you ignore governor's races, state rep races, state senate races, and those local races and statewide races, this is the result. This is why the 50 state strategy Howard Dean talked about, why it was important, and it's why black folks have got to stop focusing on voting in presidential elections and congressional elections and realize when you ignore state races, these are the results you get when you ignore those races. And so it's going to be painful for a lot of people, but they're going to look back and realize how many missed opportunities were there because they chose to be on a national focus instead of saying national, state, and local. Chrissa, Angela, Armstrong, Joey, appreciate it. Thanks a lot.